TV station Be the call, the escalation This is your radio salvation Go, 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 go How do you make a living? I make a living by entertaining. I'm a magician. If I can have two minutes of your time. Sh sure. I'm not just your waiter. Uh, my name is Steve Mills. I traffic <gasps> in magic. <gasps> Murray, it's time to unleash the town. America, this is a trick you'll be talking about tomorrow at work. just peed myself a little bit. You're larger than life. It's, it's spectacular. That is what I'm talking about. Performing all my life, and every performance is nerve-wracking. You got it? Yep. All right. What's the card, Jason? Seven of diamonds. Seven of Think again. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to believe this. Nothing for your range, right? No. Now, check this out. Bam! Seven of diamonds, people! <laughs> right the frick there. Ch see, right... And this is the crap you do to get a show in Vegas. Come on! Is that your card? <laughs> it is! It's the King of Spades! Oh my god, that is amazing! <laughs> wow. Can I have some more coffee, please? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it! Mm -hmm. Please put your hands together all the way from New York City one more time and left it! Have a great night. Thanks for being here. We'll see you guys outside. All right, everybody, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back uh, to another episode. I got a little crazy echo. Oh, there we go. That's nice. Nice. You got to love live radio. So, guys, welcome back uh, to After Dark with me, John Shaw. Yeah. Uh, one day we're going to get a whole studio audience. It's going to be awesome. Um, just a couple of quick notes before we get into the show. Make sure you check us out online at afterdark.host. Uh, if you go to that website, you will be able to link on to all of our different platforms, uh, the Instagram and Twitter and Periscope and all these other things. Uh, you all check those things out. Also, make sure you guys go and download our app for your phone, Go Live Vegas. It's the Go Live Vegas app. It's on Android. It's on iPhone. There's no excuse not to have it. You can take us with you right on your phone. You can listen to us uh, online uh, through your phone or your computer, wherever you want to listen to us. Also, we want to thank our sponsor, uh, Terror Sound Clothing out of the UK. Um, I've seen the previews, man. The shirts are on their way, and I'm very excited about getting those on. Can't wait to see those. So, I have a really fun guest with me in the studio today. Mr. Murray Sawchuck. Thank you, What's Murray. Up? How thank you, doing, you thank brother? you, thank you. You well? Uh, so, well, we finally got you in. It's, it's I know. <laughs> we made it, boy. Finally made it, made it. Yeah, right. So, um, interesting story. I, 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 I knew about you before you and I ever met. Yes. And, uh, Craigslist. So, uh, no. No, oh, I no. had something different. Grinder. No, okay, uh, Grinder didn't. Oh, okay. Actually, Grinder didn't even exist nice. back then when I, met, when I found, <laughs> first heard about you. I actually saw you on Reno 911. Oh, wow, sure. That was where I first saw you, and I was like, who the fuck is that guy? Um, but it was really super funny, and I was just like, and I didn't think anything about it. I really just thought you were some actor they hired, and blah, blah, nothing about it. And then fast forward a bunch of years, and then I started seeing you popping up in a bunch of different places. Celebricadabra, mm -hmm. uh, which was on, I think, VH1, yeah. isn't it right? Yeah. Uh, and then I saw you, and that's when I really started to learn more about you. And then uh, over the last few years, we've now become friends. 
We have, yes, which, we which, have. which has become, have. which has been great. Because initially, I just knew you the guy with the weird hair. That's right. Which I also get a lot. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I, have, I have my hat on today because I didn't do my hair, but exactly. um, but uh, yeah, we both when we're both out together in places, uh, our hair is very tall. I know. And it's awesome. We're like a punk band. Yeah, and so, like especially it. when Chris Funk is around oh, as well. I know. Uh, also, big, big, a lot of big hair in magic. Yeah. Uh, not just yeah. the girls. Not just the girls. Exactly. We got a lot of good things. So. Um, I want to talk to you uh, about about you, obviously. Uh, for for people who don't know you, um, you guys can uh, log on uh, and check out his website. He has every social media platform you can possibly imagine. We have it up on the screen right now. You can check him out on Facebook and Twitter and YouTube and uh, Instagram and all this stuff. Uh, your YouTube thing has been blowing up huge. Yeah, it's pretty we're, cool. We're going to get into that in just a minute. But let's get to your beginnings. Like, we're, you're not from the United States nope. initially. You're no. another Canadian. Yeah, Vancouver. Vancouver. Canada, yeah. And uh, when when did you first come to the U.S.? I came to the U.S. in, I mean, I always travel back and forth to a few shows here and there, but I actually travel, I moved to the U.S. in 1998 okay. to Orlando, Florida. And so that was when I made my big move. I worked in the States a couple times before that uh, for the Lawrence Welk Company okay. and a few other places. Um, and I got, you know, the visas to do that, you know, but I knew, you know, to really get a little further in the biz, you kind of got to be in the States. You, you know got to be, I mean, yeah. this is, I, mean, I know a lot of people, yeah. I have a lot of Canadians that I know, obviously, mm. because Vegas, uh, Cirque du Soleil employs most of yeah. Canada, I yeah. think. Um, but a lot of people say that, they're like, oh, I love Canada, I love Canada, but then everyone comes here anyway. Yes. Um, because yeah. it's like, I understand why you love Canada, sure. and they have, they have a lot of great things, yes. but if you're going to be an entertainer, yeah. you really need to be in the United States if you're going to go further. It's true, if you're into lumber, Canada's lovely. You know what I mean? That's the place to go. Big, you know? big for tractors. Yeah, exactly. You know, um, but but you have to go where you know. I always tell people you got to go where the oil is. You know, yeah. you go to Texas. You know, if yeah. you want to act, you go to L.A., not Barstow. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's always those things where you kind of got to go where the work is, or at least you have the opportunity to get the work. Yes. Know? So yeah. So so what what were you doing when you first? What what made you go to Orlando? What was your what well? Was originally, the I moved there because that was my. I got married, and I my okay. first wife in Orlando, and she worked for Disney. Okay. And so she had a solid job. Really Real cool gig, and uh, I thought, why not? It's was fun. it at Disney World? Yeah, yeah, at Disney, yeah. And she toured as well. Oh, yeah, she was okay. a voice of Belle and all that. And she worked. Oh, wow. the, so we lived ten minutes from the actual theme park, which wow. is all her shows. And she toured as well. But it was nice for me. I could fly to Europe easily, right from Orlando, yes. right to the coast. Yes. So you can go to Europe. And I played Europe for years. Um, so that was handy. So I could just fly away and then come back. And then obviously I started to think about, well, how do I get myself to LA or at least get seen on TV? Because Orlando is good if you're working for the mouse. Yes. You know. But other than that, I only worked really in Orlando four or five times in the five years. Everything was there. a. Do, were you doing like the ships and stuff like yeah, that the at ships that point? Yeah, ships out of there, but I basically flew to Europe. I did a lot of stuff in uh, Germany and Belgium yeah. and France and all that stuff. And uh, then I did ships as well on and off. I've done, I did ships on and off for 18 years. Yeah. Um, so it was handy as well, but. but in, in Orlando, there's like four or five gigs, and that was about it. Yeah. You know, that I ever did that were major gigs. You know. Yeah, that were so, worth yeah. yeah worth living there for. Yeah. Exactly, you know. So I stayed there till 2002, and then I moved to uh, Vegas. I got an offer to have a show at the Frontier Hotel. Okay. Um, January 26, 2002. And, wow. Uh, at that point, my marriage at the time was falling apart, and we were just too young. You know, we're still we're very good friends now. Yeah. Uh, but it was just too young. I had a lot of dreams. So did she. And uh, so I, you know, I packed my bags and I moved west. You yeah. know. And she stayed in uh, Orlando for a while, and I opened my show The Frontier, you know, and, and, wow. um, and that was in 2000. And what was the name of the show back then? It was, I think, Murray, Ma uh, Murray Master Magician, which I, I think they were trying to copy what Lance had. Because I had yes. producers, and they're the ones that gave me that name. I didn't care for it, <laughs> but they were the ones paying me and producing the show. And so I thought, well, I know. like whatever you're paying for. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm kind of like, well, I didn't want to argue with them too much. And I thought, well, Master Magician's kind of, Master sounds older, doesn't sound youthful, all yeah. this other stuff. And they're trying to compete with Lance. And I go, well, I'm not Lance Burton. Yeah. Um, but I went with it, you know, and we did it. I had a two-month contract, and then they extended me for another two months. So I did four months at Frontier, because they just got out of one of the longest culinary union strikes in I do history. remember that, because I moved here in 95, yeah. okay. and I remember driving down the strip, and I remember the people standing yeah. outside. This is obviously long before the internet kind of yes. thing really took over, but, man, they were... They, it was. It went on. It and was on. like eighteen years or eight yeah. years, one or the other. It was, it was like around the clock yes. too. They, those yeah. people did not stop. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that. You know, so when I went to the hotel, once I got into the hotel, the union strike had finished. Yeah. And got to Vegas, I had no idea that um, that there was that strike. So the hotel had a real bit of a stain on it, yep. tainted. So it was really hard to get any support. You know. That's hard to support nowadays, but but within that hotel, you yeah. Know? So it was, but it was fun. I learned the ropes, you know. Got some, you know, got some solid education on how to produce a show. You yeah. Know? And then I bounced back and forth to ships and all that stuff. And in, in between all that stuff, you know, 
I, uh, you know, I opened for Amazing Jonathan, I worked with Nathan Burton, and I also was a guest actor with the Crazy Horse from Paris at the right. MGM. Uh, yeah, I remember when that was yeah. here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it was good. It was, you know, and then I've been here since then, you know, 18 years. So. Wow. Yeah. Which is a really long time. Uh, for people who don't understand how Vegas works, a lot of people are like, oh, why don't you have your own show in Vegas, own show in Vegas? What people don't understand, it's not just having material. That is the smallest <laughs> and easiest part of having a show in Las Vegas. People have no idea of what marketing is like in this town and the competition. Sure. We have, I'm, I'm, it's over 100 something shows yeah. in this town that you have to compete with. Some of them being huge shows like, like Cirque du Soleil yeah. who have a, an unbelievable budget and can own all the best billboards, not only on the strip, but at the airport and all that kind of, people don't, people don't realize how much it costs a month just to have a billboard in this town or to get cab backs. Yep. Like how much each one of those little signs cost every month yeah. and little rack cards and all this stuff. That's where the money yeah. goes. It's not, you can have the best illusion show in the world, but if you don't have a budget for marketing, you can't yeah. do anything here. Well, to start a show up here, I don't you know, to start a show up like a normal show as a comedian, yeah. you know, or something low, low, um, low budget, low budget yeah. you know, you're looking at twenty to sixty thousand dollars, and that's just for printing posters, yeah. postcards, a billboard, just getting set up. Yeah. Never mind paying staff and crew and that stuff, um, just to get a show up and running. Yeah, you know, it's twenty six. Because people don't realize that know? there's different kinds of billboards. You oh, have yeah. your static billboards, mm -hmm. which are a little cheaper. Yep. Obviously, than the digital billboards. Mm -hmm. The digital billboards that cost more. No, actually, digital is cheaper. Are they cheaper yeah, now? Because they can change them. They can change. Oh, them. They okay. I remember day. looking yeah. back at a number of years ago. Yeah. So I was wrong. Yeah. Uh, a number of years ago, they were actually more, and they were charging per like pixel it was like a weird thing sure. uh, that i remember reading about and I'm like, yeah. oh that's, that's just insane yeah. but now you get a really cheap package what happens is they sell that board to 30 vendors yeah and you get 20 seconds of flash yeah i've never believed in that i'm not a fan of them uh unless somebody else is paying for it yes uh, because <laughs> i like the static i when i buy that billboard for the month i, I know every car that drives by is going to see me it doesn't change i own that piece of property for the month yeah you know what i mean so it's kind of like you know it's kind of like timeshare i'm not big on timeshares either i don't want to own it just for the week i want to own it for the whole damn year yeah you know? i know I totally, and so I totally that's understand. the way I feel with digital billboards and, and static. But I've always been a static billboard kind of guy, you know. So, you know. so when you were saying, so it was interesting. You were talking about um, how they named the show Murray Master Magician. Yeah. Now, I remember. I really remember when your, your other title you had, which was Celebrity Magician. That's right. And was was this your concept? Yes. And what was what was the thought? Because I I never actually ever asked you all the times we've spent time together. Sure. I've never actually asked you this, but it was like always something that floated in my head. Like what what made you go well, like you know what, I'm going to call myself celebrity magician? Uh, well, what happened was it happened on a cruise ship once where they called my um, fit enough reality show stuff. They called it celebrity showtime. On okay. the cruise ship. Now, that's kind of nice. It makes you look like a celebrity, which yep. to some people I, at that time. Um, well, on, on, a, was, on a cruise you know. ship, a lot of times you are. Sure, yeah. Like, for I mean, sure. I've, been, I've worked know. on I worked on some ships and stuff, yeah. and you you are a rock on that yeah. ship. You are a rock star. Oh, for sure, you know. Yeah. But I always, you know, I was like, well, okay. Uh, but I like that sounding of it and that. And then I went in some other ships, and they were they didn't use that. And I thought, yeah, how can I get someone to always put celebrity in front of my name. Mm -hmm. And this is the same time celebrity chefs came out, celebrity golf pros came up. Everyone was coining that term. Was I thought, using that term. I'm going to coin that I'm term. I'm going to jump on, I'm going to get on that. So celebrity magician. So every time, if that's my title, the greatest thing was, I don't care what article you write about me, they go, so-and-so, Murray, celebrity magician. Well, it looks like the writer is, is calling is me say, celebrity. Is saying that now. No one else. So it worked great for five, that's seven really, that's years. Smart. Well, it's good. Yeah. It's, it's good branding. Yeah, because it brought my celebrity up by saying it was. And, yeah. and it was part of my tagline, you know, yeah. which I always used. But it also, whoever was writing about me, they were forced to use it because that was my title. Yeah. Celebrity Magician Murray. And so that really became a good thing. Because of the celebrity chefs and celebrity golf pros and celebrity whatever the hell. Which, else especially in this town... Yeah, the, the celebrity chef thing is everywhere. Oh yeah, I mean, sure. So there's I so out. many people. Yeah. But it's also good because if someone's doing a, a, an online search yeah. and they punch in celebrity in yeah. Vegas, you're gonna pop up. That's right. On those searches. Yeah. Every single time. Yep. So I pulled that back about two or three years ago because it was good enough. Well, it was because I'd done a lot of TV. This is you know, mm -hmm. ten years ago. And now that I've done TV and YouTube and all that, you know, I, don't, yeah. I don't need the tag, so it's just Murray the Magician, because I always like the fact that within a title, if you can share who and what you are, you know, like Cedric the Entertainer, yes. things like that. I've always liked, I always like to be safer than not safe. Yeah. You know, I want, if somebody looks at me and goes, is that the Murray that does the magic? Yeah. Well, if I, it's in my title, then you know. 
and, uh, and you, I mean, and your new billboards now mm -hmm. really market a certain specific yes. look, yeah. uh, which you didn't always wear the glasses. No, no, I started those, that. Those have and, become yeah. now like part of your thing. Yeah. Um, I remember, I remember the bright blue suits. That's right. Yeah. And uh, I remember, I, I met you once before we before we ever really spoke spoke. I was. I was doing the Tonight Show mm -hmm. in LA, and AJ yep. um, uh, at the Magic Castle was like, "Hey, I'm doing a spot at the Castle. Why don't you come by?" And you were also on the bill. That's right, sure. That and I remember, ago. yeah, this is a long time Those ago. Daughters, and, I, and I met you for like about two seconds, mm -hmm. and you were just you were in the in the dressing room in the back getting ready. And I remember you had a promo shot with uh, a butane torch. Yes. And your hair, which I thought I thought was funny, because I do a stunt using a blow a propane torch, but I extinguish it onto my tongue. Oh, that's great. Uh, cool. But I saw that and I was like, oh, that's a really funny bit. Um, yeah. And then, but you were you were real busy and so we just met like for a half a second. But you were very nice. Mm -hmm. And then you know you're like, oh, who the fuck's that guy? But uh, <laughs> you know, but it but it was it was good. And I remember seeing your act and you had you did the CD act mm -hmm. back then. Yeah. So, so we around the world that act. Yeah. So a, a lot of people don't realize like when CDs first came out. I mean that's a brand new thing, and and you 1991, and, what, and you really started. Mm -hmm. You're the first person I remember ever seeing do. That's and right. then I mean obviously a bunch of people. Then hey, oh my on god! The yeah. But I invented that uh, in '91, and I started that in 1990. The reason why is I worked in Canada at a store called the Hudson's Bay Company, which is like a Dillard's here in the states. Okay. And basically, you know, they have a department store. You have a toy section, clothing section, all that. And I worked in the radio um, section where they had, um, electronic section where they had CDs, tape, cassette players, and then the toy section was right across the hallway. So that was my section. I was, I was a sales associate and I'd stock shelves. And when these CDs came in, I don't know if you remember this, but when they came in, CDs were all, only one aisle of CDs and everything was also yeah. still cassette tapes. Yep. Because these were like $30 to buy. But when you played, everyone was like, oh my God, it's like the band's in your room. It was yeah. so clean. Yeah. And I thought, oh, it's kind of cool. God, they're expensive, you know. But you couldn't beat that sound. And people would return some of them because they were scratched or damaged. Well, you know, 7 to 9 o'clock at a department store on a Wednesday, no one's there. Nothing. Yeah. You know, you're taking maybe the odd return, you're stocking a shelf again to look busy. And there was two or three CDs sitting by the cash register that were just gold and gone. And so I started flipping around like, like a coin yeah. and like a playing card. And all of a sudden, my sales associate was at the end of the, the, the um, area where you sell stuff. And I said, can I try something? I just did a, in magic, it's called a Tenkai Palm, but I just, with, with, a, with a disc, and I just yeah. lit my palm to make it look clear. And, and then I brought it back and said, like, oh my God, how the hell do you do that? I said, you, did that look good? He said, that's unbelievable. I said, no way. <laughs> and that was it. For the next two hours on that shift, I wrote every classic magic trick I could think of that you could that I could incorporate turn, with a that CD. I could turn it into a CD. The card tricks, the the fans, the, the, coins, the jumbo and, coin stuff, all that stuff. Wow. And then I started building. That. I didn't tell anybody for a year and a half. I debuted at the PCAM convention, uh, where there was you know 15, 20 acts around the world, and mm -hmm. I came in second place. It was I didn't tell anybody for a year. I practiced and practiced, and then Juliana Chen was kind of my muse for that, because Juliana Chen produced all these playing cards. Yes. I thought, well, what if I could do the same thing and produce CDs? And I produced big ones and bigger discs, and that's kind of how we're, we're all branched out. And I won the award, and I won a bunch of awards with that act, and I've been over 21 awards, I think, at one point. Um, but then I realized I needed to be a little more interesting with it, so I started incorporating productions of disco balls and, and ghetto blasters and radios and yeah. stuff like that. So I made it just not a manipulation act. Cause, you know, eight minutes of just producing CD is pretty boring. Yeah, after a while it's like, sure. okay, I get it. what it is. Yeah. I get yeah. it. You can, exactly. and, I've, and I've seen like amazing yeah. card acts yeah. and it's like, you know, the best ones are like three to yep. maybe five minutes yeah. tops. Just enough for you. Just control. enough for you to be like, wow, you've done everything possible to yes. show me they're not behind your hand right. or they're not in your hand, but yet they're, they're still coming. Yeah. But then after that, you, I've seen some of these you know, acts where they just go on. It's yeah. like it's like juggling. Juggling. Yeah. I love juggling. Yeah. It's an incredibly hard, disciplined thing sure. to do. But after a while, you know, I, I get it. You can catch stuff. Yeah. But you got to yeah. make it. But the, the good jug, the sure. great jugglers. Make it uh, um, and especially in this town, Wally Eastwood. I yeah, one love, the best. I love that guy. One of the best. I, I mean, he. His yeah. personality, of sure. course, obviously, is a big part of it. But it, it's another one. It's like you got to change it up sure. and make it harder and harder and harder until it becomes almost impossible. Harder or funnier. One harder or funnier. And mm -hmm. then, and but then you got to stop. Yes. And and there are some performers who don't understand that sometimes. You're right. Like, I'm going to do 15 minutes of the same thing. I'm like, yeah. fucking kill me. Yeah. Telling my sex life harder and funnier. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know. You know. That's what it is. You have nothing to complain about. No. <laughs> So yeah, it's true though. So you you know you got to be. I've always said, even on my coffee mug, it says don't fool them, entertain them. 
Yes. And which um, it does right here. It does. And I've always lived see, by that statement, you know. Because Murray brought in a yeah. new coffee mug yeah. for us, as you can yeah. see. Same. And if you guys uh, check out the show, we're gonna we're gonna get to the plug-in of the show where you're right here in just a minute. But um, so how so you you were doing all that here in town you're doing mm -hmm. all this stuff you you work in the magic castle you yeah. worked in magic castle a bunch of times okay. started doing some stuff then you came here you're doing your thing here mm -hmm. and then what year did you do agt at 2010 so i did that 20 years uh, 20 years ago 10 years ago felt 10 like years 20 ago. but yeah 10 yeah because yeah. It, it was it was still pretty infantile at that, that was point. the fifth season yeah it started in so i remember the first season i remember seeing it and then I remember getting emails from the talent buyers because mm -hmm. they were just like, we need magicians. And they, I yeah. mean, they still do that to That's this right. day. Um, but uh, how was your, because we had uh, Sam Wills on Tape Face. Yeah, he's awesome. I, yeah. So I asked him about his experiences with AGT because everybody has, I, I know a lot of people have been on AGT. Sure. I mean, and it is a TV show unlike a lot of others. Sure. And a lot of people don't understand how much production goes into those shows yeah. and it's not just like a competition show where you come out and you do your thing like you work with producers and, and all kinds of different people right. and, and, and come up with the different acts you pitch them a bunch of different ideas and then they choose like hey we like this we like this we like this so how did AG, the AGT I assume contacted you yeah they contacted me every year and I just didn't want to do it because I, well I don't need to go in there and look bad because yeah. you know if you look bad they really make you look bad it's yes. good to make you look good and, I th and then finally, some, that fifth season, they, they approached me, and I kept thinking, about it. I thought, well, if I'm going to do the show, I have to do something different. And the, the way I tell everybody who goes on AGT, don't think like an act, think like a producer. Yeah. So when I looked at the show at that point, five years in, saw the magicians who were on, and I said, I want to produce a car. Uh, I want to pr produce a vehicle. No one's ever done that in this yeah. stage. And that's all I cared to do. I wanted to have a tape, video. Uh, for myself, because I knew I wasn't going to go on to win. I wasn't getting a million bucks. You know, at yeah. the time I wasn't a singer, and they were all heading for singers. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. So I, um, so I pitched the idea. They liked it. They flew me to Dallas, Texas, to audition there because they needed some people over in that background and city. Mm -hmm. So uh, they said, "Hey, we can't do the car in this one, but the next one we can probably do the car." I said, ah, "I don't want to, you know, I don't want to blow it." And it's no, no, seriously, we really want you. We're down for the car because never, we've never done that. And so I went and did the bow staff where you switch girl into a box. I yeah. did the whole school girl theme because Britney Spears just came out with that. You know, that school baby, girl. Baby yeah, a few years song. before yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so I did the school girl. I was a teacher in the sense of a black suit, black tie, and the whole squish box was looked like, you know, two plus two equals four ABC yeah. in the back. So, and then the big thing was a pencil. So it made it a little more themed. And it happened in a minute and a half. And it was done, you know, and um, got great applause. And then we bumped to the next round to. Vegas, which was at the Pearl Theater, and that's where I produced the Ferrari for Sharon. And it was where I came up with the idea of spray painting on the canvas. Because my problem with the car production, or any big production, they gotta put this big wall up. Yeah. They gotta put this big curtain up, and then these got these two magicians who are walking around waving in the air, pretending they yeah. got some power. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, no, you're just stalling, you know? Yeah. It's very obvious. Which is obvious stalling. what you're doing, yeah. And I'm thinking, you gotta be doing something moving this trick forward. And so I came up with the idea of spray painting something on it because now it's, you're giving a visual and a misdirection of what's going and on. And it's, it's, it's doing the stalling, but for a purpose. Of course. Which it's a lot of magicians way. sometimes don't realize. Like, yeah. It's like you can't just wave your hands and be that's right. think that people think that's being magical. Yeah. It's like they obviously know something is happening. Of course, of course. And why are you waiting this long? That's right. If you were, to just, if you were doing magic, you would put it up, drop it down, right. and bam, there's the thing. Game over, yeah. yeah. So I came up with that years ago, and it was the first time I ever did it, and it worked really well. I was really happy, and they pushed me to the next round. And so I was really designing myself, because every trick I did in America's Got Talent, I'd never done before. Because yeah. I was thinking as a producer, not a magician. Most magicians go in there going, oh, I can do this trick, I know this rope I, trick, yeah, I, this I have, trick. I have this, I yeah. have that. I never went that way. I said, well, here I got to a national stage to do something really cool on that. Millions, do. millions of people it are going to be watching. Yeah, it was 22 million people that season Jesus. watching. The highest season ever, because now it's about 8 million. Still great. Yeah. But 22 million is un pretty unheard of. Yeah. And so, and this is before social media was used. You weren't allowed to have a Twitter or an Instagram. Instagram wow. wasn't even around then. Uh, and all that. So it was one of those things they didn't now they make use of it. They realize what a great promo. Oh, yeah, but, of course. But back in the day, we weren't allowed because they thought it would be interfere with bet, uh, voting and stuff. Wow. Now, now it's changed. But um, So then we then I pitched an idea to them. I said, well, hey, I want to I wanna, um, produce a tiger on the show because I was thinking, what do people think about as a magician? 
if it was a rabbit, a tiger, elephant, cut somebody in half, what is the stereotypical magician thing? Yeah. I thought, well, no one's ever produced a tiger on the show. Mm -hmm. So I pitched how, it. How, how'd that pitch go? Oh, well, really good. <laughs> so that's a great idea. Can you do um, it? I said, yeah, of course I can do it. And you're like, do you have a tiger? Yeah. And they're like, I, I'll get one. Yeah, no, I was like, no, of course. Because, you know, yeah. that's the way I've always talked. Just yeah, of course. You always say yes. Of course. Do you have one? Yep. I always say yes. And, and then, I've always told that. You just got to get the permission. A lot yeah. of times, it's like, get the permission. I'll get the permission first, and I'll get the money, and then I'll get this guy mm -hmm. on here. And it's like no, I just say yes to everything. People always say, "How did you how did you get away with that?" So I said yes. I said, how many times you work with tigers? Oh, lost it, lots of tigers. So you can do this. I said, yeah, turn on. what if I turn a girl into a tiger, you know? And then the tiger's there, a 450 pound lion, a uh, tiger, and then the girl is is behind the judges, and she reappears. Oh, that's great. can you do that? Of course, I've done it for years. Yeah, never done it in my life. Yeah. And so they wrote back and said, "What's that going to cost?" Well, it was six, eight thousand, you know, because I'm going to run a tiger. And yeah. I, well, I got to find a tiger. Yeah. And then I got to find a box. I got. I don't have any of this shit, you know. Yeah. So uh, they said, "Great, we can we can do 65 if you can make that work." Yeah. So of course, I started calling tiger trainers and everybody else. Found a great guy, Randy Miller. Yeah. Who's used all I mean, of I mean, stuff, yeah, that guy. I mean, he's unbelievable. Yeah, if you've ever done any kind of work with cats, Randy Miller's name is. Yep. Uh, he's is the guy. He was yeah. all the cats in the Gladiator movie was yeah. his. Because he does he does full on like a mauling, oh, yeah. a stunt with, with a cat jumps on yep. top of him, which, I don't know, people, if you've never worked with a big cat before, that's not the position you want to be in where the cat is on yep. top of you, because you're completely vulnerable. That's right. Uh, but this guy does those for, for these combat movies, and it's, yeah. uh, it's, it's insane. So, yeah, so I hired him, and then I called Stacy Jones with the Majestics, and they had, they had this really cool, identical Siegfried and Roy, you know, that was, they got the blessing to do the switch in, in the yeah. chamber from the, uh, from the girl to the tiger, and so I rented that off them. And then I said, let's do this, and I went up to the ranch and practiced it and all this stuff, we met in L.A., and, uh, and then we, had, we almost didn't get a chance to do it, though, because PETA jumped on us, of course. Oh, my they God. They came yeah. to the set, of course, the CBS lot we were shooting at, and they didn't want to get involved with that, but they, we had all PETA, and they've worked with PETA before, and so yeah. Randy Miller, so they went down there in the Humane Society, so they all cleared up. They had to put vents in the top, air conditioning for this thing. It was nice and a nice and a one bedroom <laughs> in New York City. It was, it was a damn line, you know? And he brought a second one just in case it didn't react well. Yeah. He's, you know, he's a pro. Well, that's the thing. You I know? mean, it's well, people don't realize a lot of times that these animals are, you know, they have their own minds. Mm -hmm. If they don't feel like doing stuff, they're not going to do nope. it. So nope. it's like sometimes it's like, okay, we got to take a little walk around. That's right. And let's, let's see what this guy feels that's like. That's right. So you, you always have a backup because it's a live show and it has to be yeah. all. But then, literally, we went back and forth, back and forth. Rehear I rehearsed the thing where the curtain drops. It's like a kabuki drop. For those who don't know what that means, the bottom of a curtain drops and it's covered. And then you pull into the court and the top drops to the bottom. So yes. it's a kabuki drop. So this is the curtain that was on the... Uh, the chamber. So I showed the girl in there. It was a big present to Howie yeah. Mandel. That's how I designed it. That was Marvin Roy's idea, my mentor, uh, Mr. Electric, uh, to make it more personable and yeah. make it like a present. And then we bored Piers Morgan's jacket, so we knew it was, wasn't a twin. We used the same, you know, we yep. bored it right off. No one ever bored anything from the judges before this okay. time. So we put on the girl, and then we did the trick. Well, I practiced this thing during the tech run, and the curtain got jammed every time. Every time. Kabuki drops are a giant pain well, in the ass sometimes. Kabuki isn't bad if it's a single drop. Yeah. If it's a square drop, it has to drop down as a square. And if it angles, it, it, that's it. It grabs, yes. And so four times we did this, it jammed. Yeah, the, the switch worked, but we couldn't show it because, and it was such a big thing. I couldn't get. That you was couldn't it. get to the. I couldn't get I've the, seen. I've seen that particular prop down. in person, and it is massive. It's huge. It's, it's huge. massive, massive prop. Really huge. So I, um, so Jason Raff walks up. He's the executive executive producer. He is the guy that makes all the decisions. And he walks, and he never comes down to stage. He yeah. never would know. His t-shirt, hat backwards, jeans. Hey, he walks up. He says, "Hey, Murray." He says, "So you know, um, if this trick does not work, we can't put you through." Yeah. So if it doesn't work. There's no way to put you through. Yeah. Just so you know. They can't forgive you for that. No, no. They said, just yeah. so you know, we can't get this. And I said, no, I got it. Don't worry about it. It'll work. I'm like, please, shit. So <laughs> I, uh, It'll so work. Literally that night, we school. sit in the parking lot, and I rehearsed that pull probably 90 times. It's like obsessing. Really? We Trying to figure out every what reason. What the problem is. Yeah. And I realized I wasn't, when I pulled these two cords, there's two pins that pull. Yeah. But one cord and the other cord I would release just a little later than the other because I was pulling it too slow. So uh, it just so if I cranked on it, both would come out quickly and it would drop. Yeah. But it took me 90 times. Before you figured that well out. Well before I was comfortable with thinking, you know what, I think I got this. And, and so if you ever watch that video, when I jump up, I actually jump up in the air, I'm off the ground, I pull those two things. I, had, I needed those pins to clear. <laughs> if they didn't, I wouldn't have, had a, I wouldn't have the reveal. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so, so literally till 10 at night, it was a security guard and me and Doug, Lefty, my yeah. guest act in the show, uh, practicing this thing. He's like, you gotta be kidding me, you're killing me. 
me this. I said, yeah, but man, I can't walk on that stage tomorrow can't, yeah. and blow this thing. Not, not for the curtain. I mean, other stuff, yes, but everything else works. Yeah. And But then we get a call, and uh, we're at the hotel, the soft hotel. I said, hey, Mer, it's like 7 o'clock at night. We're all excited. Big day yeah. tomorrow. I said, hey, what if we can't use the tiger tomorrow? I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, what are you talking about? This is, you know, yeah, this well, is the whole point. the Indian Society hasn't given us clearance yet. PETA hasn't cleared it yet. And if they don't, we don't need picketers or boycotters. We don't want any problems. But they're still not 100% clear on this. You know, they'll, they'll clear it tomorrow afternoon around 4 o'clock. Wow. And we go live at 5.30. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we could produce David Hasselhoff, who used to be a judge on the show. Mm -hmm. We could produce maybe Nick Cannon. I said, yeah, but it doesn't, I could produce them out of a, anything. Yeah, I don't yeah, need, you this don't need massive this, this prop. Massive and, prop yeah. I said, yeah, we could do it if you want. I said, but it's not the trick you're going to get. This trick's, you know. And so, sure enough, we go do the show the next day. I'm like, well, at this point, I'm exhausted. I'm like, well, not, not, I'm not doing anything. Yeah. I said, if you can't get it clear, I won't do the show. Yeah. So don't worry about it. I did the car, I did the other trick, I had two episodes, I'm happy. Yeah. And then, sure enough, um, literally at 4.15, literally 45 minutes before I started shoot, saying, yeah, we're clear, let's do this. I'm like, wow. Okay, now now I get to, to, to focus on <laughs> now, now we're doing the trick. And now you go back to the curtain. Don't forget, I've never done a trick in my life. I've rehearsed <laughs> yeah. it, practiced it, but I'm but thinking. But you never had it work 100%. Never. Except for in the parking lot when we got that curtain where yeah. I figured out what it But not with all the components, right? Nope. So, so you I, didn't have the girl, you didn't have the cat, you just had, yeah. I got the curtain working. No, no, we had all the girl, we had all no. the components, the cat and the girl, yeah. we, we practiced that. that uh, everything worked. Oh, okay. But what I didn't realize as well is that chamber was made for a uh, jaguar, not uh, a, a tiger. tiger. And, a, and a jaguar is about, you know, a couple but, hundred pounds. Uh, yeah, and a smaller, tiger is yeah. uh, about 455. Yeah. So there's a big difference on everything. Yeah. The weight, the, 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 everything, the structure. Yeah. So we were lucky to get, get away with that. So anyways, they cleared it. And we we're good to go. And we did the trick. And literally, when you see me on that stage, and I said the line, says, this is the trick you're going to be talking about. Um, at work the next day, and I thought, yeah. man, it's better work. Thought, Either way, if, it's a, if it blows, you're going to be talking about, about it. About it yeah. And if it works, you know. <laughs> and if you watch me when I walk around the thing, I pull that cloth. I'm off the ground, and it hits. I look, and the cloth is clear, and the tiger's there. There's no half girl, half tiger, because I had that problem yeah. too. And I was like, uh, then I says, and Howie, um, you know, the tigers for you, or the tigers for you, and the girls for yeah. you. Or tigers for me, and the girls for you. And I point. I'm thinking, God, I really hope she appears behind. Yeah. Me. And she was there, and she was there way ahead of time. But I didn't yeah. know. Yeah. And with live TV, you just go. You were just hoping. And, like, it was, yeah. and everyone popped up, and I was like, Thank God, we did. We just did it. That's it. That's we it. finished it, and I was happy, and it worked. And literally, I um, walked off stage, exhausted, and I was like. Send that illusion back, send the tiger back, send everything back. We're done. I'm never doing that <laughs> no, again. I'm never doing that it again. worked. You know, I got through it. And then I remember that because it, it airs, you know, 5 o'clock we shoot in the States, or in the States, in the L.A., but it airs at 8 o'clock in New York. Right? Yes. So I got off stage and literally, so we got off stage uh, and, and for that hour we walked back to the hotel. We relaxed. Yeah. Thank God we did it. Have a drink, a little cheers. Yeah. And then the next day you find out whether you get through. Yeah. And we're sitting there and um, all of a sudden they were like, um, Oh, here's a great thing. On my phone. I'd never had this in my life. I'll never have it again. From the time I walked off that stage, mm -hmm. the time an hour and a half after it aired in uh, L.A., which was uh, 8, 9 o'clock in L.A., yeah. for three hours, my phone did not stop binging. Really? From Facebook, Twitter. Every, and I wasn't on social. I, did, I couldn't post anything. They just saw yeah. me, and they found my accounts. And then they found accounts, you online, yeah. And mainly it was Facebook. And literally, I went from like 2,000 uh, likes or friends on my yeah. account to 5,000. It was jammed. But I, I showed all my friends to go and check with that. This will never happen. And I literally pushed the phone over. And I was like, look at it. And it just kept bang, wow. bang. And it wouldn't stop till about... 8:30 uh, West Coast time. Wow! And because it was just one of those tricks, and I had people, I had agents call me that didn't like me, call and go, "Hey man, I haven't seen something like that since six feet more." I said, "Well, I'm glad it worked." I said, "That was crap myself." <laughs> you know what I mean? I didn't know it would work either, and I'll never do it again. You know? Yeah. And that was the end of that. And then I, we had to figure out if I was going to go through the next round. Yeah. I did. I did, of course. But you so, did. But, yeah. but you did. You actually did this really cool trick, um, and it was it was a, a giant. A train. Yeah, steam train. Yeah, big giant Largest steam train. train. Yeah, but there's a reason for the steam train. Yes. Which your your family yep. was in the the train business. Yeah, railway for 150 years. All my uh, family except me. Except for you. Yep. And you're like, you know what? I, I'm gonna do <laughs> magic. Is gonna yes, be my thing. Yes, that'll do it. That'll do it. No pension plan. No, no. longevity. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna take a risk. Yeah. And how was your family with that? Like, I mean, because yeah. was it, it was a, was it just a family handed thing? Like, like okay, the boys, this is what we're gonna do. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Because when you worked in the railway, it's the old. It's like when you worked for General Motors back in the day. You know, yeah. if your son or daughter was good enough, then you can, you know, word of mouth will get you in. And yeah. It's a great job. Start at 18. My dad started on the trains at 18. Started greasing engines and all that stuff. And and that train that we used on that was a replica of his real train he wow. had when he was 18. And I think it was uh, 2733 or two, whatever number was on the yeah. train was his and um 
so what happened, we were sitting at the Ivy Hotel, and uh, Ivy Hotel, Ivy uh, Restaurant, because we yeah. were staying a block away. Mum was there, Dad yeah. stayed home for this one, the Tiger Trick. And this was Doug, Lefty, uh, my mom and me. So let's go to the Ivy and be pretend we're all bougie. You know, because, you know, I, everyone's getting those photos of the Ivy. Yeah, yeah. You know, they're rich and if people, people, they're all people, superstars. People don't understand what the Ivy is. Uh, just Google it. Google yeah. Ivy Hollywood. Yeah, it's a white uh, picket fence you, restaurant. Yeah, it's, you've seen Stars every there. celebrity there. Yeah. They're always sitting on yeah. the outside and like, oh, the paparazzi's bothering that's me. Right. But yet they're sitting outside. Exactly. It's a place to be seen. Yeah. And I wanted to go there and have a $30 salad. You know what I mean? Because that's what it is. Because <laughs> that's know, what it is. That's what it is. Yeah. But I thought, let's do this once. We don't do this often. We're having a good time. Yeah. And this is, we didn't know if we're going to go through. This is the night we're going to go through. So this afternoon we go there. We're pretty happy. And I get this phone call. And the producer goes, hey, Mer. I said, so question, what, what are your two or three tricks you do? Because they always ask you for three different I yeah. ideas. So they can they, choose. They pick one. Yeah, and I never gave them the options. I always gave them one. And I said, yeah. that's it. If you don't want to do it, I won't do the show. That, yeah. was, that was the way I, just, yeah. I didn't need the show. And I liked it. And it helped me. But it wasn't, you know. And I said, this is what I want to do. And so they said, well, what do you, uh, what do you guys, uh, what do you, you know, like, what's your next thing? I said, well, you got a couple of ideas. Can I give you a call back in about 10 minutes, you know? I didn't have any ideas. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> so Doug and I were talking, and Lefty was like, why don't you make your father's train appear? Yeah. Because in, in your storyline, because every show has to have a storyline. If there's no storyline, then there's no show. Yeah. you got to be either raised by the wolves. you got to have, yeah, you know, yeah. there's no... You people, can't be like, I, I think people misunderstand the, the television shows in a lot of ways. Like, this is a competition show, yes. but it is a, a human yes. interest show. It is. And, and if you don't have a good story, yeah. there's no reason for you to be on the show because no, no. There's, people in America, especially, mm -hmm. love to root for the underdog yes. or the person who's like, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get there. Yep. Or I was there That's and right. I went down, I'm trying to Of come course, back. it's got to have that storyline. So you've got to have that story. But you had a, you had a great story. Well, I had to figure out something because, you know, it's like, you know, it's like hey, somebody's, say somebody's raised in Beverly Hills and they're a great singer. You're like, ah, that's lovely. Yeah. You're rich. You know? yeah. So, and I would never came up from that, but I never wasn't raised bad. And my parents were amazing. We lived in a, you know, a really great life. And so, so my, Doug was like, well, let's do the, let's show an angle where you, you went, you're the black sheep. Everyone did railway in the family, and, yeah. and railway is a very American Canadian thing. And, yeah. and then you went to do magic, and your parents didn't really want you to do that, and you took the risk. Oh, great. So we you went to make a try. I said, oh, sure, that sounds good. So they called right back. Okay. So what, what are your ideas? Well, the only one I could do, if you want me to do it, is I could, you know, my dad and family worked for the railway, and I could vanish the train my father, um, you know, worked on uh, yeah. in Canada on stage. It would be the biggest illusion you ever had. Is, I, I actually said a pier, and they said, uh, that's amazing. He said, well, you already made the Ferrari appear two episodes ago, so could you maybe make the train vanish? And I said, oh, yeah, sure, of course, yeah. whatever you need. He says, it wouldn't be a problem. I said, no, how much does that cost? And I said, oh, five, seven, eight thousand dollars somewhere. They gave me a budget. Mm -hmm. uh, I said, well, let me check with producers, see where it's at, and uh, we'll give you a call. But this is only if you get through. Um, you yeah. don't know yet. Uh, you know, tonight's the big voting. But if you did, so then basically uh, they called back about half an hour. I said, great, it's approved if you get through. Yeah. Um, so keep it in mind, see what, how, how it goes tonight. And then, uh, great, so then all of a sudden went through, I did get through. And they called and said, great, where are you gonna be on this week or next? I said, Ooh, no, I'm not. I said, I'll do the following week, I can't do this week. I said, I can't, I gotta find a train. Yeah. I don't even know where yeah, the train is. Like yeah, there's a yeah. train, there's a train yeah. store. Like, I'm gonna go run down here. Yes. Uh, can I just rent that train for me? Yes. I just need it for like a week. And it was funny, this is the exact jacket I actually wore to Vanja Train. It's really funny. Oh, I my God, really? Yeah, it oh, is. Oh, that's super funny. So, um, <laughs> anyways, I was like, how are we gonna do this? And I, I said, well, we're not sure if we can do, you know, yet this week or next. Well, here's the option. I said, if you want me to do this trick, it has to be the second week. So I need to get the damn thing, and we don't have enough time. You shoot in like six days. I don't. Yeah, I need that. I can. I can there's do no it. way you're going to build that illusion in six no, days. No, I said it's, impo it's impossible. Yeah. I said so. So the only way I could do this is the second week. If not, then I can't. I can't do that trick. You know, it's a great trick, but I can't. Yeah. Because I couldn't. And so they called back, passed over the second week. We I drove to Boulder City to find a train that looked like my dad's. Yeah. We had one. You know, I had to have one gutted and changed because you know those trains are tons of weight. Yeah, I had yeah. 20, yeah. I need to have it under 2,500 pounds at that stage. So we did it, practice it, and once again we're in the parking lot with Don Wayne. Phenomenal guy I brought yeah. on for this and he was helping me along with Lefty and myself and we weren't sure how to make it vanish I knew how to get rid of it but I didn't know how to do it properly and how I really yeah. want to make it work to so make we, it look really good yeah so there we were back in that damn parking lot till 10 o'clock and I was wow. a security guard trying to figure out this damn trick once we got the train and we got the train manufactured and gutted and all that within six days got wow. it shipped Jesus into Christ. LA from Vegas I know I, I have so, actually I physically saw that yeah, train in right. person and it was monstrous it was huge it was real scale yeah you know? it was the only monstrous. thing we changed was you brought 
the cow catcher in by about a foot and a half because yeah. I had to have it made to fit the stage. Yes. And and the weight. So we yeah. the cow catcher was a little shorter than the real a cow catcher. For those who don't know, is, is the front of the train. It's that pointy thing. So um, so we had to have that brought in a bit just because it wouldn't fit on the stage. Yeah. And uh, and it was all real size. So so we wow. did it and it worked out real well. But I heard there was a few things uh, discrepancies through Copperfield. He thought I copied him. Yeah. Which I didn't. It had nothing to do with Copperfield because um, he did the Orient Express. He did the Orient Express. Yeah. And, and he did it, and he did what would be considered an Azra. That's right. Where it floated. It floated up in the air no. and vanished in midair. Yes. Where yours was 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 a different version. Yeah. Well, he yeah. well I did it inside in a yeah. theater live live yeah. uh, 100 yeah. live. Yes. Which his wasn't live. No. And uh, <laughs> also he did it, he kept the train on the tra on the rails. You yes. Know, he didn't. I didn't. Uh, my train wasn't on rails. So it's a wholly different thing. And, and I, if my dad wasn't a railway, I wouldn't have done that trick. Yeah. My dad was a plumber. I'd made a kitchen sink vanish. You know what I mean? I don't know. <laughs> so anyways, it was a whole thing. So he was upset about that. But I heard he called a few people. I actually called Howie Mandel. And uh, and then for some reason, I did not go on to the next round. It was the end of that for me. And, yeah. But I had a great run. We did four episodes. But it was, it was I, hey, 22 you know what? million people, man. You, you vanished a train on AGT before anybody yeah. else did. I mean, yeah. no one else can do that trick. No. No. no I mean, it's been copied three or four times. The yeah. Illusionist copied it for their opening. Yep. And Danny Leary and, and Europe's copied it. And, you know, it's, and people are like, oh, we didn't copy it. I'm like, Tell me, show me who has ever vanished a train since. And someone's like, oh, in 1763. I'm like, okay, you show me the picture yeah. of a guy in 1763 vanishing that train. I said, yeah. you guys, your, your trains are identical to mine. Yeah. You know, it, it never happens. If everyone looks at it, after 2010, people that train vanishes. Before that, no one vanished a steam train. Yeah. So everyone, you know, always. But it would have been smart, at least. I mean, at least if they're going to do yeah. it, like, make it appear. Whatever, switch it up a little bit. Yeah, do, I mean, don't do it exactly the, the same. The only way. thing somebody did was Dirk Arthur. He did the Amtrak. Vanished yeah. train, but that's not a steam train. It's, it's a whole different method yeah. and everything. And he wanted to be something modern. But yeah. once again, it's ironic how steam trains all of a sudden became very hip and magic the last yeah. ten years. You the know, the whole steampunky yeah. thing and all. Yeah, the jazz. and it's just funny because all the illusions cast like, oh, we didn't, we had no idea you did that. I'm like, really? You had no idea, didn't yeah. I? I only did it on national television. Yeah. With like 20 million people watching, but you know, I, I understand you, you didn't see it. No, exactly. I couldn't have seen that <laughs> or heard about it. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. But anyways, is what it is. You know, I have a laugh. I'll never do it again. It was one time thing. It worked, and you know, that's what it was. That's so pretty yeah. great. So uh, one one of the things I love about you is uh, you you are. I, I, what's a good way to say it? you you really put yourself out there in town mm -hmm. and all of it? Like you, your face is everywhere. Like every time there's a red carpet thing. I see your face, and this is before I even met you. I knew, I'm, like every time there was a picture, anything in Vegas, boom, Murray, Murray, they call Murray, it Murray. Publicity horror. Yeah, song. you're a publicity horror, and which I love because I am just like that. And people, I mean, what do you think I'm doing this for? And, exactly. And, um, I'm just like, you know what? Nobody else in sideshow uh, or magic yeah. is doing a podcast. That's right. And I have a lot of fun, neat friends. Yes. Like yourself you and others. And I'm like, you know what? Why, why don't I bring all these interesting people that I know? Of course. Because I, I have a weird eclectic group of friends. Sure you do. When I look back at stuff, like not just performers, but just like interesting people yeah. in general. And I was like, and people was like, how do you know these people? And I'm like, well, I don't know. I just start talking to mm -hmm. them. Uh, and that's what I wanted to do with the show. Yeah. So one of the things you're doing now, yeah. you're like your YouTube thing, I mean, over the last like two years, I would think, yeah. I would say, has blown the fuck up. Yes, it has. Like, like, I mean, yes. like, you've gone from like a couple hundred thousand followers yeah, yeah. to where are you up to now? Uh, I'm at 1.7 uh, million. 1.7 million subscribers. subscribers. Yes. Now, that's different than just people who just click on it, watch it for that's 10, right. 15 seconds, yep. and then they're done. That's right. And uh, Or just like it. It's, yep. it. This is people who subscribe to 100%. it. So every time you upload a new video, they're going to get that's notified right. about that. Yeah, yeah. So how, how did you, what, what happened that you were like, I'm going to grow my YouTube thing? I, uh, I, I, you know, met uh, a YouTuber who was half my age and said, man, you should be going viral. You know, but you, your stuff's great, but no one's watching it. And I thought, yeah. oh, okay. So I can make that happen. I said, really? So I took a risk on him. Mm -hmm. We made a deal, um, and he uploaded the first video. I thought, well, who knows? If I get 100,000 views, I'll be happy. Yeah. And within the first 24 hours, it did 1.2 million. 1.2 million. And now it's wow. been seen by over 110 million views on all platforms Jeez. and that. So this is where I advanced champagne bottle and yeah, and yeah. Here, done here in Vegas. And that's still the biggest video we've had out. And it's been licensed many times on TV shows. Yeah. So and it's a classic trick, but I just changed the environment, changed the location, and he also knew how to shoot it to make it look really special. Yeah. And, and unrehearsed and all this other stuff, you know. And that, it, that's kind of. YouTube, I mean, you know? I mean, it is. It is a. a, a a new frontier. Magic has changed. Yes. I mean, you you've been around for a bit. I've been around for a bit. Sure. Um, the the wave of the future is is the internet. I yes. Mean, and then I know there's a lot of the old guard and yes. even some other magicians who aren't quite as old yes. who sit there and hate on 
internet magic. Of course. Like, well, this is staged, and That's you right. couldn't do that in real life. And I, I, I try to, and, and I'm, there was a point where I thought about a lot of that too. And then I was thinking, I'm like, when, if you've ever worked magic on television, yes. it really changes everything of how you understand how things need to be. Correct. Because you're, the people, a live audience, you do a live show. That's right. It's, it's presented a certain way. And the people in the in the audience are the people there to be fooled. Correct. And that's and entertained. So that's what you're doing. Yeah. In the and on an internet video, it does not matter as far as how I look at yes. it. Yes. The people who are there. Correct. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Because those aren't the people you're no. entertaining. It's the people who are clicking on that that's and watching right. that video. And and it's uh, interestingly enough, Ted Anneman mm -hmm. made a, a thing about that in one of his books. He's like, it doesn't matter who you intend to fool as yes. long as you fool them. Correct. And it doesn't matter if there's 100 people in the room and you're only there to fool one person. If 99 people are in on it, yep. then you did your job. The big one. No, then no. you did your job. Yeah, then true, you did yeah. your job. Of course. And, I mean, this is going back I mean, to Ted Anneman's time, which is, I, you guys mm -hmm. might not know who he is, but look him up, Theodore Anneman. Uh, he, you know, this is far-reaching, mm -hmm. far-reaching. And Internet now has I mean, changed. I mean, there's so many guys out there who are, you know, have millions of yep. views, including yourself. Of course. Um, you know, and some of them live here, you know, obviously. Yes, they do, yeah. Uh, but you, your stuff is really blowing up. Actually. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy. It's, it's really? a new lease on on magic and what I can do. And I've always been a person, as a matter of fact, I have to leave my show very soon because i got to be there by 6 o'clock. Yeah, you know. yeah. Um, but one thing, though, is... Um, one, I've always been one to learn what the next thing is. Because, yeah. you know, as we get older, we don't, we don't change. We yeah. Comfortable, yeah, we, right? we, we're yeah. comfortable. Yeah, it's like, and, I want to do my show. Uh, and yeah, and it's comfortable. And it changes so hard as you get older. Because you're comfortable. You just don't want to learn something new. You know, these new phones and everything. All I can learn. Some people love it. But yeah. others be like, I just, this is good. I know what I'm, where I'm going. Yeah. And so when YouTube came around, I thought, oh, man, here we go. And that's why I partnered up with this guy, Seth Leach, a very yeah. good friend of mine. You met him. Yeah. And um, he, he understands the net. So with my skill set of 30-odd-plus years and his skill set of 15 years of the Internet and YouTube, you put yeah. those two together, that's it. You know, yeah. Lindsey Stirling did the same thing. Lindsey Stirling is a very famous um, violinist, and we were on AGT together. And she met this guy named Devin Supertramp. He's a very famous YouTuber. Yeah. And they dated for a while. Well she was going to quit playing violin because yeah. there was no traction. Yeah. Well, now she became the top, eighth most watched YouTuber in the world. Wow. Because of him. And I was and, like, what? And people don't understand how you big know? of a deal that is. Oh, huge. Because there's tens of thousands of videos yes. being uploaded daily yes. to YouTube. Yeah. So to be the eighth most viewed person on YouTube yeah, is ridiculous. by no... No stretch of the... No stretch... Yeah. A, a big accomplishment. Un unbelievable. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. So... One, so one of the things you do, you yes. do a lot of TV spots. Yes. Um, you're big on Pawn Stars. Yep. Uh, you actually got me on Pawn Stars. I did. You. We did a fun we, thing. We, wasn't we, it? we did an episode yeah. together, and it was super fun. Yep. Um, and you've been now. You've been their magic expert now for how long? How many seasons? I've done it for uh, 15 seasons. 15 I came seasons. in on the second or third season. Yeah, they're in their 17th season now. Wow. So I've done about over 30, 35 episodes with them. And, and I remember, I remember the first episode you did because yep. you, had, you had on very specific pants. I did. You That's did. Right. The plaid pants. You had the plaid pants on, and then I remember seeing them on eBay. That's right. Did you ever sell them? Oh, yeah. You I did sell them. for like 180 bucks. I signed them. Somebody <laughs> wanted them. And I, was, and I love those pants. And I, I actually I thought that was going to be my hook for that show. Yeah. Um, so I bought seven, eight different pairs of pants from Loudmouth Golf yeah. and all these other places. Just I thought that's kind of cool. And I wore a black shirt, different pants. That's, that'll be my hook for that show. Yeah. So I always like finding a hook. Yeah. And I, I had a bunch of different color pants, and I realized by the time I walk in off camera, they shoot me from the waist up. Yeah. So they, it didn't really work out the way I wanted to yeah. use the pants. Even I think Rick made fun of the pants, which is perfect. But I realized the shots they take are using the waist up, so yeah. the pants they never work. So I got a bunch of really cool pants that wear out now. <laughs> you know, but so, you know, and then I just stuck with the glasses and the hair, you know, so. Um, so, yeah. So, what would, what are you, what, are, what has been your favorite TV spot stuff? Because you, I mean, we played some video and stuff. Yeah, yeah. You were just on uh, on a show that's on a Netflix show. Yeah, Glow. Right? Yeah, Glow. I was guest star in that uh, third uh, season of Glow. You know, yeah. I played a waiter being a magician, and then um, what else? I did a show called Dog Masters 101 last year. It's going to air this year. I, I did Hell's Kitchen last year. It's going to mm -hmm. air this year. Just did another show. They've licensed nine clips of mine. Called a show called Mind. Uh, blowing okay. our magic caught on camera, so we did nine episodes of that. Wow. But but I didn't really do much. I just I just did the intros, and they used my they licensed my clips. They already the, clips that you yeah, did. Clip show. Gotcha. Um, and then uh, we shot you know five new episodes of Pawn Stars this season, uh, which is great. Yeah. Uh, and then I just I just finished my seventh season of Masters of Illusion. It's going to air wow. this summer. So, 
So it's been good, you know what I mean? And then, uh, and then in town doing my show at the Tropicana, man, just banging it out. Yeah, you know? so those of you guys who, yeah. don't, who don't know, you can actually see Murray live here in Vegas um, at the Tropicana at the Laugh Factory. Yes. Um, what, what, are the, what are the days, what are the times? Five days a week, Wednesday, Friday's off, and that's it. Come see me five and seven o'clock. Five you know, and seven and They change, and then I just signed the thing for this week, at least, and then we'll see what happens in the following week. But I'm going to be the guest uh, comedian host uh, in, not host, but guest comedian in the show Fantasy. Fantasy. Three, yeah. Uh, over so. at the Luxor. Yeah. Yeah, so it'll be Which fun is a great. That. I haven't. Yeah. I have not personally seen the show yet. No, yeah. To be honest with you, but uh, yep. uh, I, I do want to go see it. I mean, if you're going to be in yeah, it, yeah, sure. Now I, have a, and I, I have a real reason. reason to go. Yeah, see and it. the yeah. girls are beautiful, so it's not yeah, bad. don't yeah. come for me. No, so. I've, yeah. I've seen you naked. Yeah, you have actually <laughs> seen me more naked than I see naked. <laughs> but I just want to touch on one more thing before we yep. catch you loose. Yes. Um, you have you have a bunch of charities that you deal with. Can you please talk about those charities? Um, one of them, I know you do a lot of animal charities. Yeah. And you actually helped me out. My girlfriend and I were watching these people's dogs. Dog, and yes. they literally dumped the dog on us yep. and said we're not coming back. Okay. Yes, we did. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I remember so that. that wasn't that long. It was just a couple yeah. of months ago. And you, I, you were the first person. I'm like, fuck. Sure. I'm calling Murray. Sure. And you got online, and literally we had that dog yep. in a new home in less than 36 hours. Yeah. Pretty cool, right? So yeah, it was. But you yeah. do a lot of charity stuff. A huge support of no kill shelters, non, you know, no, um, no, no kill shelters and rescue animals. You know, I got three chihuahuas. I've rescued, and my girlfriend Danny, a uh, cat, she's rescued. And I'm all about that. We support Friends for Life Humane Society. You know, and. Uh, and along with that, I do a big thing here in, uh, called Three Squared and uh, Wounded Warriors and um, Opportunity Village. I, uh, you know, there's so many different charities. I do. I did. I host the National Center of Missing Exploited Children for a while, <clears throat> with with John um, John Walsh. You know, yeah. from America's Most Wanted and all that. So you do I'm some, all about it. And I just finished a USO tour. You know, for the veterans and the, and the active military and all that. It's, so, it's great. Know. It's great stuff. Yeah, you guys, and Alice Cooper. You guys can check them out online. Yep. Go to go find uh, Murray online. And uh, and what's what's your website? What website is Murray. Magic.com, and if you want to see me on YouTube, it's Magic Murray. Just, and just type Murray the Magician on Google. You'll see more than you'll ever want to see. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There's, so. a, there's a lot of stuff. I can't thank you enough, man. John, thank, thank you, you so much for coming for having in. me. I, really I appreciate, appreciate it. it. I love you so much. I love you too, I'll uh, Just let you guys know, you can uh, check us out, afterdark.host at the site. Click on our links, follow us, subscribe. We don't have a million followers, but we would like that. That would be super great. Yeah. But you guys can uh, find Murray online, find us online. Go download our app at Go Live Vegas. It's on Apple, it's on Android, it's on all the things. And uh, check out our sponsor, Terror Sound Clothing in the UK. Uh, they have a Twitter page, so you guys can go check them out on that. My name is John Shaw. That is Murray Sawchuck. We will see you next time on After Dark. Bye, bitches.